Okay, we're live. Okay. Welcome to the Open Door Baptists uh, Bible Study. Uh, Wednesday evening here at 7.30 p.m. Okay, let's begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, I oh, hope that our ways please you and I ask that the Holy Spirit come down here tonight and be through all the people here watching. And we especially pray for our brother Dino's wife and family. Uh, we hope she's okay and we know that miracles are easy for you. Okay, healer in Jesus' name. Okay, let's begin. Amen. Okay. Uh, started on the wrong slide. Okay. Now, the apostles are coming to Jesus and they're saying to him, well, you're better off coming and seeing a screen. He's going to be jumping about a bit. I'm taking advantage because people can see the words on the Bible. So if you want to follow along, better off pull up a chair. Much better off. Okay. So the apostles have come to Jesus and they're saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? You know, let's talk about position here. Who's the best and stuff like this. So Jesus, to give them a great example, what he does is he calls them over to him. And he says to him, uh, a little child, and says him in the middle of them. So he's, he's, he's giving this, he's giving an example to the apostles, and he says to them, Verily, truly, I say to you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter in the kingdom of heaven. Now, does that mean start playing with toys and doing stuff like that? No. What's Jesus trying to teach? He's trying to say to them, the kids are innocent. Be innocent of evil. That's what you want. You want to be you want to be a person that wants nothing to do with evil, uh, nothing to do with uh, their previous life, nothing to do with stuff like that. Do you remember how it was when you was a kid and you know the stuff in the world didn't pollute you so much? I mean, you, the next thing you wanted, I think it was card games when I was a kid or stuff like that, whatever it was. Uh, not the evil that came comes afterwards that enters into people's head, money, greed, things like that. So be like that. That's the sort of attitude that Jesus is showing them. Be innocent like a kid. Okay. So, whoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child. So we approach God humble. Not God, why didn't you do this? And God, that. You're talking to God. Talk to him like he is God. And you'll get what it is. The attitude, at least, the correct attitude, God, God will look at that. So the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So in the kingdom of heaven, the things that men respect, you know, cars, money, power, stuff like this, uh, you know, this is what we look for and stuff like that. No, that doesn't matter to God. Humble, that humble approach. Now, whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. Now, should we exalt ourselves? Should we talk pridefully? Because this is a guarantee from God. Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. You don't want to do it. What you don't want to do is provoke God or, or say something that will get you in trouble after. Humble yourself. We've all done it. I've done it. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So should we humble ourselves? Because we've got a promise from God that if we do, we'll be exalted. Now, that's something that people want. We're seeing the correct attitude to take. Stop the prideful talk, people. Okay. Okay. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, God, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is with a contrite and humble spirit. So I'll bring people to heaven. I'll dwell in the high and holy place with him. That's with a contrite and humble spirit. It's the perfect attitude to have. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. God is doing the repair work. 
that we need to move forward. Okay. Say unto the king and to the queen, humble yourselves, sit down. Now, who are we speaking to? Kings and queens. People that think they're important or that they're worth more than other people. Uh, perhaps a mayor, perhaps a policeman, perhaps somebody who thinks he's high and mighty or something like that. You know, uh, they watch films about gangsters and want to emulate them, these evil people that do these things, okay? Say to them, whoever it is, even a king and queen, humble yourself, sit down. For, you, for your principality shall come down, even the crown of your glory. God will come down. Okay? Bring humble. Hear you and give ear. Listen to me. Remember when Moses went to speak to Pharaoh, he didn't go, oh, it's Pharaoh, let's not talk to him. Hear you and give ear. Be not proud, for the Lord has spoken. Just checking that the feed's going. Sometimes it cuts off. Still there. Okay. Right. Let's do an example of someone with pride. Let's do that example now so that you don't make the same mistake. Okay. Uh, okay. How art that fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? So he's fallen from heaven. Okay. Now, some people are going to think this is going to happen in the future. No, he was kicked out before. Okay. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down? So he was lofty before, and he was cut down, which did weaken the nations. He has caused so much damage, Satan. Look what's happened. Because you said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. I'm going to be worshipped as well. In the sides of the north, I will ascend, as a clue to Revelation, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. I will be like God. This is Satan talking, not me. So but Satan's... Gone. Satan. Not really, because you're about to see what happens to him. <laughs> this is, yeah, there are Satan worshippers, and if this is what's going to happen to their boss, guess what's going to happen to them? Okay, so let's have a look at what happens to their boss. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, well, they can see at the top. So if you're following us and want to check this, please rewind the video afterwards and look up the verses. If you want to read more on this, we'll expand. If you have any questions, leave them. I will answer them. Uh, some people have left questions. I'll, I'll keep looking during this. Okay. So, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Okay. You thought I will be like the most of but. Yet you shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. You know, you, you. And consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? So, we're at this point now. And people are going to look at Satan in the end. They can't believe they're going to worship him. He's just like them. Okay. Okay, you shall die, you shall be brought down to the sides of the pit. This is Ezekiel. Okay, that shall be brought down to the sides of the pit. You shall die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Some people say it's applying to the king he was speaking to there, but it's applying to Satan as well. Okay, will, will thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? You see, are you going to do that? How are you going to. Um, uh, how are you going to call yourself God if you're going to be slain? Are you God. still going to call yourself slain? By yeah, by God. But thou shalt be a man and no God, and in the hand in the hand of them that slayeth thee. I want to give you what for, <laughs> if you want to keep doing this. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hands of the strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord. 
So here we go here. It doesn't look like a good ending for him. So let's see what Satan's going to do to take you with him. Because it says, he, you know, he's, at the end he's going to know that his time's short. So he's going to start at it. So what's he going to do? Exactly like the people that think they're the most high. There was a woman that called herself God on the TV. I, she said, I am. And I, and I sit there thinking, well, oh, I'm not going to say those words. Yeah, thou shalt be brought down to hell. So how does Satan get you? How does he get you? What do we look out for here? Thou hast been in the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, jasmine. Okay, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and thy pipes was prepared to the end of that. So a musical instrument. Satan was a musician. Okay. Good way to get kids in. Good way to get you in. You know, make a catchy song, a satanic song. We're gonna, I'm going to show you some examples. And, you know, kids sing along with it, satanic stuff. And it's terrible what they're doing. So they use music. So Satan uses music. Yeah, subliminal as well. I think they, they, they played the Lekker. We all did that. We played the uh, Justify My Love backwards. Uh, you know, where someone says they love Satan in it. I see them. They think, oh, stuff's real. They're putting in the music. Okay. So thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. So God put him in this uh, position, this anointed cherub position. Now, a cherub isn't a little kid with wings flying, stuff like that. The Bible doesn't have a description. We'll do that what it is another day, but it's a four-faced angel and stuff like that. Okay, so that's the cherub. Thou has, uh, So thou was upon the holy mountain of God, has walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in your ways, perfect in your ways, from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. So uh, he started off all right, and some people are going to say that. They're going to say they think that their good works are going to save them when they do something evil. It doesn't work like that, okay? You don't get, uh, you know, the judge isn't going to say, oh, I did, you did all these good things in your life, so I'm going to let you off the uh, robbery or something like that. He's going to put you in for the thing you did wrong. Okay, so you were perfect in that ways in the day that I was created till iniquity was found in me. Okay? And he's going to burn in hell for it. Okay? He doesn't have the excuse that we have of ignorance. So, how does he get you again? By the multitude of thy merchandise. They have filled the midst of thee with violence. So for money, people are going to commit violence. Okay, that's how I'm going to get you. Uh, so sometimes you'll find a, 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 a type of rap. They're not all bad at rappers are bad, not at all. Not in any way. But uh, there are some out there that will sing about uh, the most unholy things. And what they will do with that is they will... Um, convince you, you know, I bragged, I shot a guy and stole his wallet instead of getting a job, you know, or, or something like that. So they fill the midst of him with violence. Satan's doing this. Satan's behind this. Thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the map you know, God, and I will destroy thee. God's not messing around here. So uh, nobody gets away with it. O covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire. Okay. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Now we see this all the time. Sometimes you have a good looking person and their heart's lifted up because of their beauty. They're getting lots of attention. You'll get stars that just want yes men around them, not real friends. You know, they'll uh, they just want to hear what they want to hear from their subordinates. Do this, do this, do this. No one will ever correct them. They're too scared. They don't want to lose their job. Okay. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. So, we're seeing the same in people as well. Okay? Sometimes, uh, I know that some Satan made a few people, that, that famous guy, Manny Pacquiao, he fell because of all the brightness and, and, and everything that was going, he was a bright star, so, but he came back to God afterwards. You do get that. They, they do come back to God afterwards a lot of times. Okay, I will cast thee to the ground, I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. So all this pride you had, I'm going to lay you before kings, okay? 
so that they can look at you. Now, we've got a few examples here. If you, if you can see that there from where you are, okay? Drink beer, smoke, but, uh, okay, uh, and he's saying some, some terrible things is Kurt Cobain. He's giving kids some advice here in an interview. Yeah, he's dead. I mean, there was a, <laughs> what good did it do him? Yeah, if you're smoking all this stuff, you're making your mind weak, devils come in, and, and, and people like that, they would suddenly want to commit suicide. So he's got a big pile of money here, which is absolutely no good to him because he's dead. I mean, what can a dead person do with all this money? Nothing. Fans, win, whatever. Okay, so what's the next one? Uh, I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, but I didn't, so I sold my soul to the devil. You know, by merchandise. Remember we said before merchandise. So she sold that for merchandise. Uh, this is uh, Katy Perry, yeah. <laughs> Son of a preacher woman, I heard, I think something like that. I, I, I won't say anything. I won't falsely accuse, only the facts. Okay, so I've seen the video where she says this. I've seen the interview where she actually said this. Okay, so I've checked out all of these. Now, the next two, they use their music to do these things. To reach out to you, they'll use their music. So what they'll do is uh, they'll sing lyrics like, The devil's in my soul, so my heart became a grave. The flame just burned. Okay, I'm the master and the slave. Now, uh, this is what she's doing. She's singing songs, so the child picks up the song and starts singing this. You know, I'm the, I'm the uh, master and the slave to the devil when he comes into my soul. Uh, that's her. There, that's her name there. Okay, so she also sung a song about repenting. Now, she did sing a song about repenting. I, I've seen the lyrics for it. I don't know which one come first. Hopefully, the repenting came after this terrible, awful song. So... Watch out what your kids listen to. Watch out what your uh, the people you know are listening to. Tell them, warn them about you know the the easy trap that the devil sets. So there's another person here. The devil comes and soon my subconscious. I might start to bore as a cunning demon takes me as a bit. voodoo doll. You want to be a voodoo doll for Satan and you know buy my records and stuff like that. No, no. You keep your records. Okay, this is a bit of a shocker to me. I was an Elvis fan. Uh, sometime in the near future, we'll see how the so-called ministers of God react. As I agree that they're so-called, a lot of them, react as their worn-out ways in the old days. Now, when you hear old age, uh, sometimes it, 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 what they're saying for new age is Satanism. I mean, yeah. And when they're saying it, I can't wait till this new age comes. You know, it's Satanism. Apparently, we shouldn't listen to the Bible because it's the old way. <laughs> you know, there can't be any wisdom in anything 4,000 years old, really. You know, and we've got this other guy who says, Jesus can't save you. you know, trying to reverse the message of the cross. So, yeah, <laughs> great message for kids, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but let's put him on shows and give him lots of money. You know, uh, you see that a lot. You see that a lot, you know, uh, the kids are influenced and they love this pop star because he does all this. Okay, so here we have again. Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Now, this caused a huge problem for David afterwards. The punishment was severe. Okay, what happened is David had pride in the Bible and he started... Look how great I am. Count how many men I've got this. Count how much gold. Count how many people we've got from there. And it was puffing him up. The pride, the greatness, you understand? Now, this is what's happening in, the, in some of these churches. There are, this is a picture of some mega church. I don't know which one. But you start to see how it's working. Because what you, they'll do is, because they'll send out a soft message, love, love, super love, you know, Hippie love, they turn Jesus into a hippie. This is what you'll get. You'll get a stadium full of completely brainwashed people who don't know about repentance, don't believe in hell. And this is this is this is a terrible result because a real church is one that will convict you of sin. It's one that will Well, it's also a fantastic distraction for them. I mean it's an evil distraction. Evil, not fantastic, it's evil. Because what it is, is these people actually genuinely interested in God. 
and uh, they won them over with Satan's thing with music shows, rap shows, uh, music concerts, and stuff like this. And they, and they won the people. And they well, instead of attacking the church, they couldn't do that. So what they did is this is a, this is a, a terrible attack on the church. You pull the people out of a real church and bring them to a rock concert, and they think they're going to a church, but it's not. The messages are watery. There's no Bible. There's no Jesus. There's no even quotes from the Bible. It's, it's, it's completely worthless. It's like one of those uh, feel-good tapes that people put on. You know, it just makes you feel better for a little bit. It's like taking an aspirin. It doesn't solve your problem. just kills the pain for a bit. So this is what's happened, and uh, this is how, how Satan's game. So he's using the, the rock concerts. He's using his music, which he's good at. And it gets people out of a real church where they're convicted of sin. And this is what happens. Okay. Now, the apostles, um, they start thinking, who's the best? Who's the best? And, you know, who's going to be in charge when things just goes? And, you know, uh, two, two of the boys came and they said, we want to be high up in heaven with you. And we want stuff like this. The mum must. So they've got the ump. The apostles have got the ump. You know, we've been with you longer. You know, we, we get this. So they've said to them, Jesus calls them and says, uh, he puts it straight, straight away. And, and the message for the future church, he says to them, you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. For example, a controlling pastor, uh, a cult, I so, understand, uh, overly controlled stuff. Anyway, and they that a great exercise authority upon them, okay? Uh, but it shall not be so among you, okay? It will not be like that in a church. Okay. Whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Hence the washing of the feet of the Last Supper, the, the, the example of them. So if you want to know who the real Christian in the room is, it's not the guy that told you, you know, I've been doing this for many years and baptized thousands of people. That's not the real Christian in the room. It's not the guy with the Bible sitting there looking pious and stuff like that. It's the guy, the real Christian in the room is the humble guy. Doesn't tell you about his achievements. Doesn't tell you about where he's been and what he's done and how fantastic he is and stuff like that. This isn't a real Christian. You want to find a real Christian in the room, it's the humble guy. Hi, how are you? Yeah, 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 great. That's fantastic. You know, the humble guy in the room. So, uh, it, yeah, and the person who needed to be humble the least was the most humble. It says about Moses as well. Uh, Moses was the most humble and meek man. I mean, that's not someone I would have sent against Pharaoh, but, <laughs> but he had a lisp. You know, some math problems. Uh, that's not a guy I would have sent against Pharaoh, but, you know, he would have been last. Last on the list, couldn't find no one else. You know. But anyway, I digress. Okay, so we're seeing here what it's going to be. Now, a clear instruction from God. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. You see, the pride and these things, they can be a problem in you. And if someone tries to say, uh, show you something, you might be too prideful because you thought you should have known that. Uh, you might be too proud to take advice. You might be too proud to listen to the word of God. You might be too proud to actually change yourself. Now, don't let that be part of you. Um, God can pick anyone. He can pick anyone to do anything. You know, uh, uh, David to fight that giant. David was the last person that would have, should have been picked. You know, a little shepherd boy, and you've got all these seasoned warriors. That's just, but God picks who he will, who he wills. You know, the pastor might be uh, a humble man that you wouldn't expect. Be a Christian that doesn't boast about the Christianity that he does. They might call you, like they called me, to different church meetings. We're calling all the heads of the churches and stuff like this and to do this and that I, it was just a complete waste of time for me i couldn't be bothered with any of it be a real christian in the room 
be humble when you speak. And no matter how well you're doing in your life, don't forget about God. Don't let the devil tempt you with merchandise. Don't let him tempt you with your pride, because pride will trip you. It will trip you up. It will, uh, it's, it's a snare of the devil, and, and it will do that. So let's take it uh, to the next step. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, so he's against you. The, I think Satan means he who opposes. Okay, As a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he can devour. He wants to devour you. He wants to get, get you to do bad things. He wants you to lose your temper. Don't. Don't open the door. Just close all the windows to Satan. He can't get in. Follow the Bible. Uh, put on the armor of God. Uh, we're doing a video about that in, in the future. Uh, well, we did one before, but three, four years ago now. I think we need to make another one. <laughs> okay. So uh, take that message. Now, sometimes uh, people will try and push your buttons, make you slip up. Don't take the bait. Don't take that bait. Always act a Christian. Always act humble. No matter how much the devil tries to get in your heart and make you speak a different way, act a different way, unchristian, you, you do what Jesus said, uh, and you know, get thee behind me, Satan. And, you know, in Greek, that's a big insult. When you're telling someone to go behind you, you're turning your back to someone. That's a big insult. So let's remember that. And when the devil comes for you, sorry, gates are shut. Get thee behind me. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gathering tonight. I ask to pray for all these people listening and let the message go out there. Let a lot of pride be stopped tonight. Let a lot of Satan's plans be scuppered tonight. We want all these things to be gone, finished, over, and people to change. We want us to change their lives. We want to get rid of that pride. We want them to appear before you humble, asking in prayer, humbly. We want you to don't boast to their friends as a joke. Don't boast at work that you're so fantastic. And don't, these things, uh, you know, thy word have I hidden in my heart so that I may not sin against you. I don't want to sin against God. You don't want to sin against God. And we don't want to be brought down. Let's be humble in our lives. Okay. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God be with you. Thank you for joining us on this Bible study. Any questions, leave your comments. We'll get back to you. Have a good night. Bye-bye.